Hey guys, welcome to this session by Great Learning. My name is Anirudh and I welcome you all to this session on a uh, random forest model using Python. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, I hope all of you are uh, staying safe. Welcome to this session. Before we begin, however, just head to the uh, chat box and type in a quick yes uh, if you can uh, hear me fine and of course if you can see my screen fine and then uh, we can go on to begin the session. Right. And of course, guys, in the meantime, I'm using my mobile phone to make sure uh, that, you know, I monitor all of your comments as well. So whatever comments you have, uh, make sure to keep it coming. All right. I'll respond to all of these comments. Uh, you know, as always, we are going to keep it highly interactive. This is going to be a highly energetic session. So make sure you're keeping your comments coming and uh, we can have a discussion. Right. Okay, so Suresh uh, says, yes, I do have confirmation uh, from a couple of you. Vonita, uh, Rahul, Ramesh, uh, you know, all of you guys are saying yes. Perfect, guys. So thank you so much for tuning into this session uh, by Great Learning. We're going to check out a lot there is to know about machine learning algorithms. Uh, you know, one popular algorithm called as a random forest model. But then, guys, before we actually go on to begin, I want to take, uh, you know, a second of your time uh, to guide you about Great Learning Academy. Now, Great Learning Academy, is one of these ventures we have here where we provide courses uh, for free for you guys to learn now uh, you know we have 700 plus thousand learners who are tuning in from 140 different countries you have somewhere around thousand plus hours of uh, free learning content out here and of course we get somewhere around 3 million uh, monthly views in our learning content ladies and gentlemen now uh, when you take a look at all of these courses right uh, you know we have 200 plus courses which are uh, you know some of these courses are of course even put out in different languages as well for example you can see python programming in hindi uh, you know python for machine learning in hindi and for uh, you know all of you people who are asking uh, for hindi courses right so uh, you know the advantage of great learning academy is that you can of course sign up for free you can uh, enroll yourself into these courses for free you can learn for free and here's the best part you can get a certificate of completion absolutely free of cost as well right now that has to be a huge advantage for all of you all if you're looking forward to adding it on your LinkedIn profile, on your resume, and at the end of the day, hey, it's your knowledge base, right? So it's working towards your favor completely. All of these are, uh, you know, courses which are taught by subject matter experts who are proficient in their own domains. Uh, we have multiple levels of training here. We have beginner oriented courses, we have intermediate level courses, and of course, we have advanced courses as well. Now, since we're talking about machine learning, I just clicked on the machine learning tab and as you can see, we have multiple programs, uh, you know, multiple courses here, which are, uh, you know, offered in terms of machine learning for you guys as well. If you want to take a look at a beginner program, uh, this is what it would look like. Now, uh, this is a one hour uh, worth of course. You will find out what there is to know about this course. What are the skills covered? Uh, you have an entire, uh, you know, course syllabus here as well, right? The best part is once you enroll for free and once you complete it uh, you know once you complete the quiz and all the requirements you will get a free course completion certificate as well how amazing is that right so this certificate is going to look something like this uh, you can put it out along with your printed resumes put it up on your LinkedIn uh, you know basically having a certificate uh, you know even if completion shows a lot of uh, value to a prospective employers right so this is a very very important point uh, that all of you guys uh, should know about uh, let me just quickly increase my brightness a little bit. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is Great Learning Academy. Now the uh, advantages of it is immense. One thing I can promise you at this point in time is no matter where you are in your career, right? Uh, you're in school, uh, you're in college, uh, you're a person who's about to graduate or you've graduated, you've started looking for jobs or you're a person who's looking to switch your career as well. Great Learning Academy has something for you and you know I can promise you that because at the end of the day, uh, you can take away a lot of knowledge out of here and of course, uh, since you're getting a certificate of completion, it adds that much more value right uh, we have a complete job interview preparation section all of these are free life courses uh, you know based on soft skills you get aptitude preparation technical preparation a lot of different things as well so make sure uh, you're checking that out and of course for our learning collaborators we collaborate with some of the best prestigious and of course uh, you know ivy league uh, universities and schools out there you have stanford business school university of texas austin uh, you know northwestern school of professional studies srm pes iit madras well you would know it right so guys uh, you know uh, great learning academy has something for all of you all here you can reach it uh, you know 
we have multiple uh, places you can click uh, a simple google search great learning academy will get you here but of course at the same time uh, you can download the great learning application as well this is available both on the android play store as well as the uh, uh, you know google uh, you know, the android app play store and the google uh, i'm sorry and the apple app store as well right so we've got you covered in case if you're an android user as well as an apple user too perfect if you sc uh, keep scrolling down you'll find out more about the academy you'll find out more about what our learners have to say faqs and a lot more things so make sure you guys are checking out uh, great learning academy right guys before we begin with the session make sure to subscribe to the great learning youtube channel and hit that bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us and as always if you like the content that you see uh, do take one second and hit that like button it'll mean the world to us and of course help us bring out better content for all of you all so ladies and gentlemen uh, you know put down any of your comments that you will have throughout the session it'll be my pleasure to answer them and uh, we can get started right with the session now the most important thing that we have to discuss is what are we going to learn in this session right first thing we have to take an introduction to machine learning let us understand what machine learning quickly is we can take uh, take a look at the uh, you know types of machine learning models that are uh, there and of course uh, we can get an introduction to what the random forest model itself is now once you take an introduction to machine learning understand all the types we can filter it down into uh, this world of random forest uh, you know the random forest uh, model is a very fascinating thing when it comes to machine learning we'll find out what it is how it works and of course ladies and gentlemen at the end of this we are going to practically uh, walk through a simple set of code where we will be implementing random forest you will see that it is really fun to implement it is really easy to go on to do a complex task as well right well at the end of the day that is machine learning uh, for you you can uh, you know take a complex task break it down into simple steps and use the power of your machine uh, you know teach your machines to do the hard tasks and of course and they, they do it gloriously well right so that's the important thing so this uh, is the session takeaway ladies and gentlemen so without further ado let us jump right into the first point of the agenda now uh, you know the first part of the agenda we're going to talk about how important machine learning is for data science right see whenever you're talking about anything machine learning understand where you're coming from or where the domain itself is coming from right now this is a domain uh, where uh, it happens to be one of the most important foundations uh, from taking data science as a domain to using it to achieve artificial intelligence right so it's a very important aspect of how we can achieve ai itself and when you take a look at today's world uh, you know most of the companies if not all of them are trying to find ways of how they can leverage machine learning and deep learning all of the complex concepts the statistical methodologies everything that's involved to make sure that they are uh, you know they're efficient with their time and efforts as well right so this is an important thing now what happens in the case of machine learning well you guys head to the uh, you know chat box and let me know right the most important thing that you have to understand is that uh, you know here we what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach machines to do the tasks for us so we have certain data the machines uh, you know use this data to learn and eventually we verify if the machine has learned anything or not uh, you know it's called as model evaluation and after model evaluation we deploy the model uh, by model deployment what we usually mean is we we put the model uh, to use uh, where eventually it it solves a problem right so right from having data to pre processing it to giving it to our machine learning algorithm to learn and once a machine learning algorithm learns it is called as a machine learning model then you verify if the model is working evaluate it tune it to make sure it works better and then deploy it right so this is the overall uh, you know quick working of machine learning but at the end of the day when you take a look at uh, you know what uh, or where the data itself comes from or how the machine itself learns you have to uh, understand the most important the heart of machine learning lies in the data itself the quality of the data and the quantity of the data has everything to do whenever you're training anything be it random forest be it knn be it logistic regression wherever it is uh, you know if your data even if it is in a high amount of quantity but if it's low in terms of its quality uh, the accuracy score is going to take a really big hit and uh, this at the end of the day is going to be a waste of time in my opinion because uh, see if you are putting in a lot of time and effort to create a machine learning model uh, you have to at least get satisfactory if not great results right uh, at the end of the day if that is not the case and if your machine learning model is predicting stuff incorrectly more than it is doing correctly 
well it's a waste of time i'm sure um, you know you guys would have understood this but understand this at this moment in time that uh, if you do it right and it is a very easy task to do it in python as i'm going to show you in this session uh, you know it's going to add a lot of value to you as probably an individual contributor and of course to your company who there's a good chance who are already making use of random forest so right let me quickly check out if you guys have put down any questions Isco says need to know k mean and decision tree on the given data set well of course isco uh, whenever you have any sort of a data set understand this you can implement multiple algorithms and the best part and especially if you're learning the fun part is to see on a common data set right understand uh, you know which algorithm works better for the data set it so happens that sometimes uh, you know linear regression is an algorithm which can work okay uh, you know it can have a decent enough uh, error rate but as soon as you move to a knn uh, problem to solve the same thing well at the end of the day uh, you know your knn your linear regression logistic regression whatever it is that you're trying to use one of these is going to give you a very effective result a very efficient result using that you can understand hey if i have this kind of a data uh, for uh, this particular instance uh, you know this algorithm works better right i hope i answered your question uh, is go with that perfect so guys uh, when we talk about the types of machine learning there are uh, three important types of machine learning that you guys have to know about and if you have tuned into this session i am sure you might already know this but if you do not know don't worry let's cover this quickly there's supervised learning there's unsupervised learning and of course there's reinforcement learning now these three methodologies these three types of learning itself right these govern the world of machine learning so it's very vital that you are strong uh, you know in these fundamentals guys so without further ado let's actually jump into the first one to analyze supervised learning now uh, whenever you take a look at the name itself right supervised learning what is the first thing that comes into your head uh, you know whenever someone consider a kid to be studying and learning or something whenever you say you're supervising the kid who's learning what does it mean uh, you know at the end of the day you are keeping an eye out of it you're supporting the way the student learns or something like that right you're giving supervision in the case of machine learning as well think of the machine to be a kid right now uh, here what you try to do is when you provide the data to the machine uh, you tell the machine hey this is what the data is that you're seeing right now on your screen uh, you can see three images flowers dumbbells and car this is a very important point you me and of course everyone uh, you know who's watching this video uh, from our childhoods we have been trained to see what flowers look like what dumbbells look like and what car looks like right now even if i show you a real flower right now you can say that it is a flower it is not that the only image that you see on your screen is a flower and you, everything else is not correct even if you see 100 1000 10000 images of flowers dumbbells or cars you can realize what it is and of course if you have any car enthusiasts here uh, you know you guys can actually go on to tell which model car it is and of course you can all tell which color it is it's a coupe uh, it looks like an audi audi tt or something right so yeah uh, you know you me are trained to do this but if i show this to a computer it'll have absolutely no clue what it is seeing uh, if i say that hey this is here is an image of a car but if i lay able it as a cat uh, you know it it will think that the car is a cat right so in its most simplistic state your machine learning algorithm can only understand zeros and ones to make sure that we are not inconveniencing ourselves with typing zeros and ones all the time we have operating systems we have programming languages and we have all of these things right now anyway coming back to supervised learning here's the most important thing that you guys should know about with supervised learning whenever you're presenting data to your computer for it to learn you say hey here are flowers uh, you know you first give the image of the flowers to the machine and say hey these are flowers so you are 100% certain that the image that you are giving yourself is a flower now in this particular case you might ask a question saying okay so what if i give the image of a flower but i say it as something else your machine learning uh, algorithm is going to learn wrong now is it the fault of the machine learning algorithm or it is the fault of you well it's your fault right you've given it a wrong label so in this case with supervised learning it is very very vital that you label your data correctly and this is why i stress uh, so much on uh, data pre processing and cleaning in all of the sessions that uh, you know i handle here as well right 
perfect now uh, one thing is clear we have to provide the label to it right so one other important thing which governs the world of supervised learning uh, you know is this particular formula where we uh, call, we call it as y is equal to f of x it's called a function mapping formula uh, you know what we are trying to do here uh, in the case of supervised learning is we try to map a relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable right now in this particular case in y is equal to f of x if you consider x to be the input variable whenever you apply any sort of transformations functions on this particular variable doesn't the value of y also change here so y is supposedly the dependent variable and it depends on the value of x x value keeps changing because we keep applying functions to it and whatnot and this kind of a mapping that we have in between our uh, you know dependent variable and independent variable is literally at the heart of how supervised learning works right i hope uh, you know we were clear uh, with this particular slide right now there's one important thing that you have to know about uh, supervised learning is that there are different types of supervised learning itself now ladies and gentlemen machine learning is a part of data science right data science machine learning in machine learning there are three different branches of learning we already saw supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning now in supervised learning we have two groupings which is called as regression and classification now both regression and classification uh, you know are amazing applications and i'm sure you have seen these applications everywhere around you in the real world as well now regression talks about how you can predict future values from our past data it's a very simple example to showcase what regression means in regression what we try to do is we find a relationship called as the best fit line uh, in between two variables you know it sometimes is a linear line it's called linear regression uh, you know sometimes you have to uh, do some classification with respect to it using regression uh, the concepts of regression there you use logistic regression for binary classification you know there's so many uh, different things there now that is regression in the case of classification what do you do when you say classify when i give you uh, let's say three apples and four oranges uh, i mix it up and i give it to you and i say hey classify this based on the fruit what will you do you're going to separate all the oranges separate all the apples right now what if i say uh, let's say both of these are not ripe and of course when they're not ripe both apples and oranges are green in color right now i say separate these based on the color well now you just bunch everything up into one single uh, block and you say hey all of these are green colored fruits because all of them are one color right i didn't ask you to do it based on fruits now i said do it on color right now that's a very important thing of how you can classify one different uh, you know one common entity in a different way itself and this going ahead you're supposed to know this concept right so it's not always a binary classifier that you'll be working with it's not always that you show uh, an image of a cat or a dog to your computer and ask it hey which is which sometimes uh, in classification there are other things uh, you know which you are supposed to be concentrating about as well okay pawit singh uh, uh, you know you say you are a great fan i understand this but please do not uh, you know spam the comment section uh, you know it would uh, uh, i mean very kind words thank you so much for joining but then hey uh, make sure you're not spamming the uh, chat box right all right guys if you have any more uh, comments uh, please uh, do put it down uh, i am monitoring all of these uh, in um, using my mobile phone right perfect uh you know i see uh you know more comments uh uh abarna says when i try to enroll it says uh, page server error uh, well abarna i'm sure someone who's uh, uh in our team who's answering the comments will definitely help you out on that right guys now anyway uh you know coming back uh, to uh, the next form of learning which is unsupervised learning unsupervised learning i'm sure you can guess what it means right uh, you know we do not provide labels to the computer and we we leave it to the machine itself to figure it out now you can see the same image of uh, you know what's happening on your screen right now you have three images you see flowers you see uh, dumbbells you see an image of a car correct but you don't see the labels underneath them you don't see that i have marked flowers as flowers dumbbells as dumbbells and car as car in this particular case 
we want the machine learning algorithm to rather find structure that is present in the data. We want it to figure uh, it out on its own. So instead of uh, giving it the label ourselves, I ask it, hey, here is the image, find me an input, find me a structure, tell me what's going on and you have to learn it on your own, right? This is how unsupervised learning works. Now, uh, at the end of the day, whenever uh, you, know, you are taking a look at this, you might be wondering now saying, hey, isn't it easier for uh, supervised learning algorithms to work compared to unsupervised learning? The answer to that is an absolute yes, to be honest with you, because again, uh, both of these are very powerful. If you use simple data sets, it literally will not take a lot of time or effort to do it. But the working itself, the complexity, when you take a look at the mathematical aspect of things and implementing it as well, right? Unsupervised learning does have uh, has a little bit of a challenge in it. Okay, perfect. Now you know what unsupervised learning is. Here are the grouping uh, you know, concepts in terms of unsupervised learning. So unsupervised learning can be broken down into two things called as clustering and association. Now, uh, in the case of clustering, what actually happens is that we group things based on their characteristics, right? As I told you, remember the color example that I just told you, green colored fruits, you will just put it into one single thing. If I say, hey, split out the apples and the oranges, uh, even though both of them are green in color and they're uh, not ripe yet, uh, you will just split it apart because you know what an orange looks like and you know what an apple looks like, right? So that is, uh, that is clustering. You make groups of different things. If I give you bananas as well, well, you can still cluster, uh, uh, you can still put uh, bananas out and split it out from apples and oranges, correct? That's clustering. Now, when we talk about association, an important thing about association that you're supposed to know is that uh, this is a very famous thing that's used everywhere. Now, if you're a person, I'm sure you might have watched a TV show or a video on YouTube or Netflix or whatever it is, right? I mean, who doesn't use Netflix these days, right? In Netflix, whenever you watched a TV show, at the end of it, it's going to say people who have watched this have also watched this. If you have watched a horror movie, it's going to give you another horror recommendation, right? So how does it know that people are liking that based on this TV show? It might be a sequel, it might be a prequel, it might be something else, it might have your favorite actor, all of these things. So Netflix has this amazing use, uh, uh, you know, use case where they use unsupervised learning to its uh, full potential out there, right? So that's a good example of association. Another example of association is whenever you're on Amazon, you're buying, let's say, uh, a new mobile phone, you know, as soon as you buy a new mobile phone, if you keep scrolling, add it to your cart and all of that, it'll say, hey, people who bought this mobile phone also bought a case and a tempered glass or something like that, right? Because every time someone buys a new phone in India, there's a good chance they're going to put on a tempered glass and a case on it. So Amazon itself has learned saying, okay, so this is a situation, this is the structure, this is how things work. So let me recommend it also, right? That is association uh, for you guys. Perfect. Now let's talk about reinforcement learning quickly. Reinforcement learning is again another amazing uh, type of learning in machine learning where uh, you train machines and it learns based on the feedback that it gets from its own learning, right? So it is an algorithm which will work towards the rewards. Now, if you're a person who has a pet dog, I am sure uh, if you've ever trained the dog, you will understand the situation. Now, if you want a handshake from your pet dog, usually if you see a professional trainer do it, uh, he or she will get a handshake and then it they'll give the dog a little biscuit, right? They'll give it a little treat. So the dog knows, hey, if I give a handshake, I'll get a treat. So what it does is whenever you ask for a handshake, it gives you a handshake, simple as that. But uh, what if you ha ask for a handshake and the dog runs away? Do you give it a treat then? Well, no, the dog ran away. The entire point was the handshake. It didn't give you the handshake. Now, that's an important thing that you have to note here. Your machine learning algorithm is just like this dog. Uh, rather than running away, what it will do is it will try maximum to get that treat. So it will work towards that reward. And whenever it is going in the opposite direction, whenever it tries to run away, it is penalized. Of course, no one penalizes. I am sure no one penalizes their pets in real world. This is a hypothetical example, right? No one punishes pets. And I suggest all of you all not to as well. Uh, but this is how uh, it goes in the case of a machine learning algorithm. There you're just changing numbers. It's not hurting anything, right? So uh, once you start saying, hey, uh, you know, you, the machine learning algorithm realizes it's going in the other direction. It has the capability to correct itself and bring itself back towards working on the rewards itself. That's the most amazing part about reinforcement learning. 
Perfect guys. Now we can take a look at our random forest model. Uh, you know, uh, before we even talk about the random forest model, we saw supervised, we saw unsupervised and we saw reinforcement learning. Can you guys tell me which type of algorithm uh, is random forest model? It falls under one of these three. Now I want you guys to head into the comment section and tell me, uh, you know, which model is this. In the meantime, I'll take a quick gulp of water. All right, while you guys put down the answer, uh, here it is. Let us understand what the random forest model is all about. Now the name itself is very random, right? Random forest. What does it even mean? Why does it have a name called as random forest? Well, let me tell you this. When you think about an actual forest, what is the first thing that comes up into your mind? Uh, a lot of trees, right? Uh, it is usually a group of trees. And when you look at a forest, the picture of a forest, you you know, there's a good chance you will see hundreds, if not thousands of trees. Uh, and you will not just see thousands of animals right next to each other, which you can see, of course, there's millions of uh, or organisms and animals there. But what's the thing that pops that catches your eye, the trees, right? Uh, you know, a random forest model also got its name just because of this fact, it is made up of trees. Now, what trees are we talking about in the case of uh, you know, computing, right? We're talking about decision trees. Now, decision trees uh, are a very important aspect of machine learning where we try to break concepts down into the uh, into how a tree works. Now, when you take a look at a tree, it has a root, uh, it has a stem, it has a leaf and all of that, right? So whenever we have to work on mathematical concepts, we consider the data to be in terms of root, uh, if it's of very important uh, aspect, if it adds a lot of value and we divide that, we break it down into more simple things, call it as, uh, uh, you know, call it as stems, call it as leaves. And each of these leaves are the end of it, right? So when you take a look at an actual tree, uh, you know, at the end of a leaf, there is nothing. The leaf is an end point, right? It grows on a stem, but the last thing that comes out of the stem is what? A leaf, right? There's nothing that grows on the leaf uh, to do something from the same tree as well. So that is this particular case. Now to answer your question, uh, random forests are, uh, you know, is basically this model. The working is a very fascinating model. It is a supervised learning algorithm. So in the case of a supervised learning algorithm, what do we do to the label and the data? Well, of course, we provide both the label and the data itself, right? I'm sure you guys uh, already get, uh, you know, already guessed this. All right, perfect. So some of you guys got the answer correctly. Let me check out uh, Kashyap, uh, Uttam, Vineet, uh, you, know, you know, all of you guys say it is supervised. Perfect. Uh, Suresh says unsupervised. Well, Suresh, it is actually random forest is actually a supervised learning model, right? Pravesh says, what time class start? Well, Pravesh, you're uh, tuned into a live session. So the class is going on as we speak. In fact, half of the class is over uh, right now. But I highly suggest you stick around for the, uh, uh, you know, the other important part, because here we're trying to take a look at the introduction to random forest. We're going to check this out practically as well. Right? Perfect, guys. Now, uh, you know, now that you know how Random Forest gets its name, uh, you have to know one very, very important thing about Random Forest that make it extremely popular in today's world, right? Now, Random Forest is a group of decision trees. Perfect. Uh, decision trees themselves have a use case which is very, very wide in its scope. But did you also know this? Uh, random forest is one among the top classifier techniques that we use today because it works both for regression and classification. Now, guys, you head to the comment section and you tell me, uh, you know, what, uh, give me an example for regression and classification, right? We discussed this and I am sure uh, that, you know, you guys can give me a simple example. So, guys, quickly head to the chat box, give me an example example for regression, give me an example for classification. Right. Now, in the meantime, you might ask the question saying, okay, so if we already have decision trees, why do we require random forests? Very good question to ask, because uh, I'll tell you this about decision trees. Decision trees uh, has one major problem where it has very high variance in terms of learning when we use it. And of course, it has low bias. 
what this means for the layman is that the output that you get from a decision tree is very unstable. It is the exact opposite of what we look for in terms of stability. Now, in the case of a random forest, a random forest actually fixes this problem by having what? Low variance and high bias. This is what we're looking for. And look on your screen. Decision trees does the exact opposite thing. But guess what? Once you bunch up all of uh, these decision trees, or of course, more than two or three decision trees, this issue is actually solved. The bias goes up and the variance goes down. So that is why random forests are very popular today, right? It takes in data, uh, it splits the data based on uh, your requirements. It creates multiple branches out for the data. And whenever there is an output that needs to be presented, these output go as leaves because that is the end point. That is the end as we just told you, right? Even on a literal tree. Now, uh, once you have a forest, you have multiple trees. When it comes to multiple trees, each of these trees can be a little iffy on their own. But when they're working together, they do wonders again. Uh, you know, just like our forests as well. Perfect. So I hope you're clear with this. The most important takeaway here is that we're solving the issue of decision trees and, uh, you know, random forests work both for regression and for classification itself. So, uh, you know, it's an amazing thing to know about random forests, but do you know how random forests work? In this particular case, I believe that it is important for you guys to understand this because again, this is a very popular algorithm which is used widely today. Whenever you apply for any sort of machine learning jobs, the uh, popular stuff that they're gonna ask in the interview and of course, practical applications is something to do with random forest as well because this is a challenging concept to attack and the applications you derive out of it is very powerful. So guys, make sure you pay attention, right? Now, uh, in the case of the random forest model, one very important concept that you have to know about is the concept called as bagging. Now, uh, bagging, what happens is that, see, whenever you have a data set, right? A data set consists of multiple rows and multiple columns worth of data. Uh, do you always take all of these for training? Do you take always all of these for uh, testing? You can, if you want to, right? You can take up some number of rows with all the number of columns of data. But what happens here in the case of bagging is that, uh, first of all, we will take all these observations in a random manner to make sure that we are not biasing the data, right? There is something called random bias, uh, which at the end of the day will make sure that your data is not random if you can find a pattern. So to make sure we remove that, we make sure to uh, that our data is 100% random. What do we do? We uh, randomize it and then we start picking up the samples out there. Now, uh, you know, first we go on to actually select the columns where, uh, you know, these data is incapable of giving us a significant output. Now, if you take a look at a tree, it has to have a root, right? If you pick up a weak seed for the root, well, there's a good chance the plant might not you know, grow up well and do fine, right? All of those things. Uh, here's the same case as well. So whenever you're trying to, uh, you know, have a root node, the data that goes into the root node, the variable that is represented in the root node must be fundamentally strong. In that particular case, to make sure we find something fundamentally strong, we pick up everything that is incapable, right? We're doing the opposite thing here. We're trying to remove everything which cannot uh, be the root node, right? At the end of it, when we do all of these processes, you will have the variables and the dependency that is created in between these variables that says, hey, uh, you know what, these are good candidates to start out and become the root node, right? So whenever you're talking about multiple trees, uh, you, these multiple trees in the random forest will be connected by one common node as well, one common root node as well, right? So these dependencies on trees will further decrease the accuracy if you're not careful uh, with the root node or whatever it is uh, that you pick up as well. So guys, this is a very, very important point uh, that you have to know about. Kashyap says decision trees will fail sometimes and then random forest is introduced. Absolutely true Kashyap. Uh, it so happens that I just mentioned uh, that, you know, their model of working, right? I mean, decision trees don't shun it as of now. Don't call it as bad uh, because uh, standalone applications of decision trees are amazing. But in our case, when we try to implement it and we try to use machine learning, right? That is when they show a little bit of a disadvantage, which again is fixed by the random forest model, right? Perfect. 
So to talk about more about uh, you know the concept of bagging, right? Uh, see, whenever you're picking up uh, the data in terms of, let's say, you want to consider two samples, right? Two samples are given by two colors, blue and uh, red. Now, in this particular case, in bagging, what you do is first of all you try to find whatever is incapable of becoming the root node, and you pick up all of that for samples, right? Uh, this is done to make sure that your root node itself is very accurate. But in the case of uh, a random forest, in the case of how the forest builds up further, data is selected at random based on, uh, you know, once you have the main root node or once you have the root node of the individual decision trees itself, then filtering upon it to the, towards the leaves or uh, going down the hierarchy of the tree becomes really easy. So that is why we pick up, uh, you know, random samples. As you can see, blue, we have picked up these, uh, you know, random rows and columns and then we have picked up these random rows and columns. This works. But uh, in the case of bagging, you have to pick up all the columns to make sure that you know you remove any sort of inaccuracies there, right? Now, uh, I told you one very important thing when I when we started this discussion about random forest. I told you that uh, it will work both for classification and regression as well, right? Now, if you have a good amount of training data, how will you know how much that you have to break for your training data and how will you know what amount of observations you have to cut towards training and how much remains for testing, right? Some, yeah, you know, in some cases you can take a random call on this. Maybe you can have a majority, 50% for training, 50% for testing, 60, 70, 75, 73, whatever works, right? Uh, you keep doing it on a trial and error basis and it works. But at the end of the day, in a random forest model, uh, you know, we do have a certain parameter that you can use. If you're working on a classification model, right if you have total p number of columns take a square root of p and that eventually becomes your uh, uh, you know testing data training data set i'm sorry right in the case of regression what you do is you take the total number of columns p and divide it by three right that will give you the total number of uh, that is basically in terms of classification and regression you are trying to find out how you can pick up these uh, sub samples right as i told you you can randomly wing it and eventually use uh, testing and training data uh, you know manually Manually to keep tweaking it, make sure your model learns, relearns well, the error rate is down, all of that is fine. But uh, to keep things simple, to make sure your forest is uh, working at its most efficient way, here is uh, something that you can mathematically, uh, you know, you can go on to use. Perfect. The next thing you have to know uh, something about classification and regression is that a classifier will work whenever there are labels, right? So it has to be discrete labels and these discrete labels are called as classes. Uh, in this class, usually if you're talking about a binary classifier, it is usually a yes or a no, one or a zero. Now, if I ask you a question saying, did you eat a chocolate today? Uh, what, what is your answer going to be? It's going to be either yes or a no, right? If you ask the same question to a kid, the kid is going to say maybe. The kid can lie, right? Of course, you can lie as well. But if I only give you a choice saying you have to either say yes or a no, uh, right? You cannot say maybe I ate 10% of a chocolate. You cannot describe the answer. You have to give me a yes or a no, one or a zero, right? It's a binary outcome. Now, that is the most important thing that you have to know about, uh, you know, classification here as well. This is a classifier. Now the talk is about a regressor or the process of regression, right? In the case of regression, it so happens that you can have multiple numeric and continuous outputs that you'll be working with, right? Uh, so there is a very nice use case when we talk about uh, a regression uh, analysis is the house price analysis. Now you answer this, whenever you go on to buy a house, right? How do you pay for the house? How do you know what the house is worth? Right, you look at the crime rate in the area. Uh, you know, you take a look at how many floors are there, how many cars you can park, how many rooms, how many kitchens, how many baths. So you look at a lot of different things: how uh, well the house is built, what is the age of the uh, house if you're buying it, uh, you know, where someone else built it for you. Uh, you take a look at the flooring, the interiors. Right, there's a million things that will go into analyzing, uh, uh, you know, the price of a house. If it's very far away, it, if it is in the countryside, it is you usually valued a little less because it's far away uh, from the city center, far away from the malls, far away from the schools, whatever it is, right? 
now uh, one important thing that you can uh, gauge here and analyze here is using all of these factors you can perform multivariate analysis to a point where you can actually say hey uh, you know based on the crime rate based on the age of the house based on the tax price of the house based on how many floors of the house or how far away from the city center it is you can map a relationship to say this is why this house is worth this much how amazing is that right that is how you would go on to do uh, you know the process of regression of course you have multiple different examples where your output will be describing the situation of an input in those cases as well regression works fine now there i'm not saying i'm not asking you a question saying is the house worth it or not that's going to be a classification it's going to be an yes or a no here i'm saying use all these factors to tell me the worth of the house itself right i hope you're getting uh, this particular thing perfect now to talk about some very important advantages and disadvantages of random forest model right now you might be wondering that you know i'm glorifying random forest to a point where it seems to be the best of the best well it is a very nice algorithm to work with because one important point here is that it reduces overfitting which happens in the case of decision trees and eventually helps bring up the accuracy now in this case what usually happens is as i told you uh, decision trees have uh, uh, you know it is inefficient to all of its degrees so why that happens is because of this concept called as overfitting in overfitting your model searches so deep into your data that it finds noise rather than useful information so it starts learning using these noise it eventually becomes inaccurate and it doesn't know what to do right it digs way deeper than it can handle and understand that is overfitting but in the case of random forest it prevents or it reduces overfitting to a great degree and this at the end of the day is a huge huge advantage advantage which can have a lot to do with respect to model accuracy the second thing is that whenever you are taking a look at uh, uh, you know random forest model it is a very important thing that it is both uh, it is both flexible in terms of its working with classification and of course with regression problems as well the third thing is that it will work both with categorical values and continuous values categorical value can be something like your blood group o positive continuous value can be something like your age your salary and all of that right it works well with uh, both of these types of values and 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 here is the important point about uh, a random forest uh, in terms of data preparation if there are missing values that are present in your data random forest model will automatically know either to ignore it or to fill it in so that it doesn't hurt the accuracy right sometimes in your data your data can be missing or at the end of the day what happens is that is your data can as i told you it will have a huge impact to play in how your machine learning algorithm learns if it is missing uh, you know if it is missing a certain couple of values your machine learning algorithm uh, model will not know what to learn based upon that so this is where uh, your random forest model steps in and says hey it's fine that it is saying you know we can automate this and work with it but then is it always glorious well the answer is yes in my opinion if you ask me because i'm a huge fan of random forest models but there are certain drawbacks that you have to know about the first most important drawback that you have to know about is that it takes a lot of time to train a random forest model whenever you compare it to anything else whenever you compare it to linear regression whenever you compare it to knn and all of that a random forest model requires a huge amount of computing power it requires not only computing power but also storage resources and all of this because it has to take your data it has to create multiple trees it has to bring all of these trees together create a forest eventually derive a result out of these forests now these uh, this process that i mentioned right it is going to take a good amount of resources right now of course whenever we are looking at simple use cases uh, it will not make such a difference but whenever you are doing this in a productive environment it becomes very important that you understand this right now the third thing that you have to know about the third very important drawback is that uh, you know whenever you are trying to assess the significance of uh, each individual variable in the case of a random forest like you know you have multiple decision trees all of these decision trees become a forest if you want to analyze and understand what each of these variables are doing and how it affects the outcome it becomes difficult in many cases if your tree is pretty complex it will almost become impossible to not understand why this variable has such an impact on the output of course your model is correct it is working fine but if you want to assess that individual variables contribution to the output it becomes difficult right so this is something that you guys have to know about right perfect now let us discuss some of the most important applications out there 
uh, in the case of the random forest model it is used across multiple different domains guys in the financial sector it is used to perform stock market analysis it can tell you uh, it can predict the price of a share and tell you where it might head into the future you know it can either the price of the share can increase decrease and all of that all of these are being practically used uh, in the case of the banking sector you can see uh, uh, if a person will uh, you know default a loan or not so when you provide a huge loan to a person maybe with a small amount of salary there's a good chance the person might not pay the loan back or might not be able to right so in that particular case as well you can use random forest you can do fraud analysis you know credit card frauds upi frauds all of these things are very very common today so make sure to avoid all of these things uh fraud analysis is done using random forest and then in the e-commerce sector as well again recommendation systems to perform customer pattern analysis uh if you look at a lot of mobile phones if you keep looking at a lot of game series or something like that on amazon every time you open up amazon you're recommended the same stuff so they want you to uh, you know buy the same thing they're trying to help you they are trying to add convenience uh, into your life so that's an important thing and then in the case of the healthcare sector i think this is a very beautiful application because healthcare and computing the best of both worlds coming together to solve a problem is absolutely amazing in my opinion and this is one of the reasons why i in fact came into this world of uh, machine learning as well right so uh, you know whenever you're trying to find the risk of multiple diseases out there research purposes uh, you know even in the process of producing a vaccine finding out if there is a pandemic or not there was a machine learning model which eventually found out uh, covid-19 virus uh, before world health organization you know put out uh, the message uh, way back in 2019 right so uh, this is a very important thing that you have to know that you can do all of these things and a random forest model will help you uh, you know achieve all of this right so perfect guys now is the time that uh, you know you guys all have been waiting for the practical implementation the hands on session uh, you know that we are going to do uh, in terms of uh, you know checking these out practically right perfect so guys it becomes very very vital that you check out all of these things practically i have a very simple model that i want to show you uh, you know first of all i am using google collab google collab is basically a python jupyter notebook hosted on the google cloud platform it will basically let us execute python code in a very easy fashion without having to do uh, you know without having to put much effort so guys let us discuss the random forest model here right now whenever we go on to use any sort of algorithms any type of learning the first thing when you're coding is you import all of your libraries and you import all of your data sets right so here we importing three very very important libraries numpy matplotlib and pandas numpy and pandas are used for numerical computation and statistical analysis as well uh, you know pandas is a very famous library which will provide you two types of data structures series and data frames where you can store single dimensional data multi dimensional data and what not and then you have matplotlib matplotlib lib is a fantastic data visualization library in uh, python which will let you create beautiful looking graphs as in fact you will see that's the reason we have imported it as well and then uh, you know we're going to be working with a data set called as salaries and uh, and i'm going to print the data set to show you uh, what uh, we're going to talking about right now see as soon as i executed it it is saying hey where is salaries.csv i don't see it right so i have to upload it first let me quickly go on to upload salaries.csv here so i'm trying to have you know i have salaries.csv the data set is in my computer and i have to bring it to this python environment right now if i go on to run it again it will import the salaries.csv right perfect let me zoom out a little bit uh perfect now guys uh, in this particular case in this particular data set what we are trying to do is look at the data itself we have three columns position level and salary as soon as you look at it i think you can guess what you're looking at right you're looking at multiple job positions and their level right you might have heard of l1 managers l2 managers l3 employees all of these things right so uh, in this particular uh, example that we have a business analyst is a level 1 employee who gets salary of 45000 then you have a junior consultant whose salary is around 50000 is a level 2 employee then you have a senior consultant whose uh, salary is somewhere around 60k uh, it goes on and on manager country manager region manager partner all the way to ceo where a ceo makes somewhere around 10 lakhs per month or something like that right uh, this is the level uh, that you can see now what i want to do here is i want to use this level to see if i can predict uh, you know what is the salary right so i want to take a level i want to say hey machine learning i want to tell my machine learning model hey uh, if the person is level 
point five or something like that. What is the salary of this person? Can you predict and tell me that? Right. So that's what I'm going to do, and this is what your data set itself, uh, you know, looks like. So I hope you're clear with the data. Now to actually go on to filter the data, right? Now see this position tab, whatever the names of the positions, I am not interested in. This is only for your reference. Now what I want to do is I want to drop this column and I want to only use levels to predict salary, right? So I can remove these positions. Uh, so with this particular uh, uh, you know line of code, two simple lines of code, all I'm trying to do is I'm using iLock to filter out and keep levels and salaries alone, right? I'm removing and I'm dropping uh, positions. Now let me zoom in a little more. Perfect. Now, uh, I told you that a random forest is a group of trees, correct? Now, a group of trees, uh, in this particular case, you can ask saying, hey, should I use five trees? Should I use 10 trees, 20 trees? What should I do? In a, a forest regressor, as you can see, a random forest regressor that we're trying to use from this beautiful library called as scikit-learn, it becomes important that you gauge how many trees that you want to use. If you have a very simple use case and if you use 35, 40 trees, it will work. But if you use 1000 trees, it will eventually just take a lot of time and eventually it'll overfit and it will not be accurate, right? So uh, to answer that particular question, more number of trees, does it always mean a more accurate output? To a certain degree, yes, but as, uh, you know, is it always? The answer is no. In this particular case, as you can see, we are importing the random forest regressor, which, which is the model that we are going to use, the algorithm random forest. Uh, I have used 10 trees here. Now, how do I know that these, uh, that I've used 10 trees? You have a, uh, you know, attribute that you have to pass to the function. It's called as n underscore estimators. In n underscore estimators, uh, you know, eventually we are using uh, 10. So this means that our random forest model will have 10 decision trees which will eventually use to build the forest itself right and then we actually go on to fit the model we train the model by passing it x and y value what is x and y uh, x and y is the level and the salary that we're going to pass right as soon as i run this uh for all the people who might have been thinking that, hey, is it going to take a lot of uh, code? Uh, is, it, is it going to take 25, 30 lines of code just for the machine learning algorithm to learn? The machine learning algorithm learns with just this one line of code, model fitting, right? It's very important that you understand this. Now, the next thing, the next very important thing that you have to know about is how we can perform predictions. Now, what is it that I want to find out? I want to see, I want to see if the model has learned to an extent where, uh, you know, it can predict the salaries of the people who have, uh, you know, who have a level greater than 6.5. Let me go up and show you the data. Now, level six, seven, eight, nine, ten is perfect. So if you're above a regional manager in the level of a partner, senior partner, C-level, which is can be CTO, chief technology officer, all of these things. And then you have the CEO itself, chief uh, you know, officer, right, perfect. So I want to predict these guys' salaries, right? So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to run a prediction. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna give you a value of 6.5. You predict the salary out of it. Now, at the end of it, we are already at the last step. What we're trying to do is we're trying to visualize all of this practically we're trying to say hey uh, you know what uh, with this put us a graph and shows rather than seeing a textual output our regressor will give you this beautiful output all the red dots you see are individual data points and a graph is mapped here now what was our requirement we had to find a position 6.5 right 6.5 is probably somewhere here Using 6.5, just go to the x uh, y axis uh, uh, you know just to find what the salary is it's just 0.2 now, wait a minute, uh, our salaries were somewhere in thousands and lakhs and what is this point to? Can anyone tell me the answer to this? It is correct. What you're seeing on your screen is correct. But can you tell me what, uh, why we are seeing point two? Well, let me tell you this. Look at the top, look at the legend on the top, it says 1E6. Now, if I take 0.2 and multiply it with 10 power 6, which is 10 lakhs, what is the answer that I'm going to get? 0.2 into 10 lakhs is what? Two lakhs, right? Let me go up. What is the salary of someone who's in between six and seven? On an average, it is somewhere around, uh, uh, you know, two lakhs per uh, per month or whatever it is, or three lakhs per month, right? It is somewhere around two lakhs. That is the thing that you saw here. Point two into ten power six is what it is telling you to do it. Instead of just showing you a really big number here, it's a convenient way of using, you know, shortening down long mathematical operation. So this is the output of our random forest regressor. When I ask it a question saying, hey, uh, you know, what is the uh, a salary of someone who has level, uh, you know, at 6.5 or more than 6.5, you know, you can see this chart that it plots. It says, hey, 6, 7, 8, uh, you know, 9, 10. 
this is the average salary that you get all these red dots that you see right six seven eight nine ten it is trying to tell you hey this is the salary at these particular points this is what the machine learning algorithm learnt based on our data and eventually it gave us an output to say what i think is the output right it's a pretty simple thing and when you look at it let me zoom out it's not even a lot of code and this is the power of machine learning right even though it is complex to implement uh, uh you know even though it is it takes a lot of computing time and all of that we have three lines of code where we're importing the data set uh, we have two lines to filter it one line to fit the model one line to predict five lines to print it out right how difficult is this right so this is the entire point of the session to make sure that you guys understand uh, that you know it is a fun thing to work with random forest regression right guys now usually uh, you know there's a follow up question saying okay wonderful i understood random forest but where can i go ahead if i have to learn more about machine learning one thing about machine learning that you have to be really careful about when you're learning is things can get really complex if you do not learn it in a structured way right now all of these sessions we have here at great learning or any learning material you get here at great learning we make sure we understand your requirement to break it down into bite sized pieces so all of you understand whenever you're learning right that's the point uh, we try to provide the highest quality of learning material possible uh, but uh, it so happens that see whenever you're learning you really start with a simple google search and when you start with a google search it will provide you lack and lacks of results that's a good thing but if you do not have a structured path of learning uh, it is very easy for you to pick up all the things get confused and eventually you will go to a point of frustration where you stop learning we don't want that to happen to you right so to make sure this doesn't happen make sure you're keeping your learning in a structured way make sure you're talking to experts who are in the industry so that you can find out whatever it is that you have to know how you're learning when you're learning and all of that now for example i am a, you know a subject matter expert when it comes to data science machine learning art artificial intelligence all of these concepts so whenever you tune into these sessions with us you get to understand our aspect of view you get to take a look at uh, you know learning a very complex concept in a very simple fashion just like how you learned in this particular session right a very important point for you all the next thing you have to know especially for all the people who are in college right now is that did you know that 72% of all the college graduates say that they want to study machine machine learning online it is because they're very much interested they know that it's a very trending concept and they know that if you have machine learning learned in your college itself as soon as you come out looking for a job it will take you one step closer uh, to having your dream job your dream designation or whatever it is right so it's like a fast track to that and people know that Uh, to go on to do this, people usually pick up the machine learning electives in their college because they know whenever they're picking up these subjects, it'll eventually help them on their journey. And this kind of a this is a domain where there are students, there are professionals, and there's a there was a gap. Uh, you know, there's a gap in other domains where uh, people, as soon as they come out of the college, they're not ready to take on the domain. In the case of machine learning, that is not the case. If you are a professional in terms of machine learning, as soon as you come out of your uh, whatever uh, learning is done, uh, you will be a professional, right? Of course, you will. require uh, a more serious approach into learning but this kind of a gap is reduced and it doesn't happen in a lot of other domains data science machine learning all of these are uh, very very popular for this right so to get more free content on data science i highly suggest all of you all to check out great learning academy great learning academy is a place where you can get course uh, you know get access to 200 plus courses taught in multiple languages by subject matter experts for free you can enroll for free learn it for free complete it for free and ladies and gentlemen get a certificate of completion for free as well uh, it becomes a very important thing that you can check this out to know that there is immeasurable advantages uh, waiting for you at the end of the tunnel there and the next thing is great learning you YouTube channel i hope all of you all have fun whenever we do all of these sessions i see so many positive comments from you all thank you so much for your love uh, you know we have a lot of people tuning into the session do take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel it'll mean it'll mean a lot to us and help us bring better content right so make sure you're subscribing hit that bell uh, hit the like button first of all guys right now uh, for uh, you know for all of you people who love reading as well right we have great learning blogs now great learning blogs is an amazing place where you can read a lot about these technical things. things again these are blogs written by experts who know what they're talking about so if you're a person who likes reading uh, you can definitely check it out these three places in great learning is uh, you know where you can get amazing free content to learn 
now uh, you know free content is one thing that will get you started with the domain to get you to a certain level of expertise but it, if you are a person who is very very serious about your career i highly suggest you check out the specialization and the post graduation offerings we have here at great learning guys we have multiple post graduation programs mtech programs masters in science programs in the domain of data science uh, business analytics data engineering machine learning and everything right so uh you know we do this in collaboration with some of the most prestigious universities in the world you have texas mccombs great lakes uh you know we have courses with stanford we have courses with northwestern uh, ps university iit madras there's so many different universities that we are tied up with so you get to learn first hand from some of the best uh, uh you know lecturers uh, some of the best faculty in this particular college uh, as well so that's the advantage you get here at uh, uh, you know great learning in fact let me actually go on to show you one of these uh, particular courses. course as well you guys will go from a beginner uh, you know handheld right to becoming a professional so if you go to the greatlearning.in website and uh, since we're talking about machine learning let me open up uh, one of these programs that we have which is the post graduation program in artificial intelligence and machine learning right now this is a 12 month program where you get one on one mentorship as well so this is done in collaboration with UTA University of Texas at Austin uh, McCombs School of Business uh, you know there's multiple reasons why this is considered to be a top course uh, you know ladies and gentlemen uh, it becomes very important that you check this out you get a comprehensively put together curriculum which is may which is meant to uh, uh, you know put for working professionals out there python machine learning deep learning whatever it is uh, you know you get 12 plus projects under the guidance of industry level experts uh, you know you get dedicated career assistance as well career fairs uh, you know you have 300 plus partners where uh, you know we have seen people get an average hike of somewhere around 48% and more and this is rated as the number one artificial intelligence program in india as well so this uh, you know completing this will give you a, a, a certificate from the university of texas at austin which looks like this and of course from another certification from great lakes uh, executive learning which looks like this so you get two certifications here now whenever you're talking about curriculum it becomes very important that you understand it in detail so make sure you click the down load brochure here which will give you complete in depth look at all of the curriculum that you see right each of these modules right you'll begin searching you'll begin by learning from foundations machine learning artificial intelligence additional modules where you will require some pre working whenever you have to uh, understand all of these in detail so you get a lot of different things guys you get multiple hands on projects you get a capstone project career assistance pg certificate from ut austin you know you you have a lot of languages that is covered in this program python numpy kiras tensorflow and more and more so you can see uh, uh, you know all the hands on projects what you'll be learning what you'll be doing uh, you know in these projects as well all the faculty all the mentors uh, you know all the people who are our uh, mentors you know a lot of lot of uh, people who uh, here who are amazing at what they do and it becomes very very important that uh, you understand that you're learning uh, from the experts out there right you have multiple advantages i hint go on to talk about the advantages of great learning on and on but i'm sure you get the point right so make sure uh, that you check out uh, the pg program in artificial intelligence and machine learning out here you have uh, multiple different things on the top you can see the projects faculties benefits career reviews the fees you get details about all of these things uh, you know there's a 12 month program where you get 225 hours plus of online content uh, you know there's a lot of different things 30 plus practical use cases and all of these things right so uh, you know there are multiple partnerships as well which can get you a 0% interest straight again all of these are based on terms and conditions so make sure uh, you contact our experts here they will guide you in terms of uh, any help you require in terms of finances as well so all in all this is a very well rounded program that will take you from being a beginner all the way to becoming a thorough expert in the domain right guys with this you have reached the end of the session i hope you guys had a fun one as always you guys are an amazing audience to be teaching with it's a, it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be training you all on all of these uh, so guys with this make sure you guys are staying safe uh, from the ongoing pandemic it is not yet over keep your learning rate high uh, make sure you're checking out great learning academy and of course if you're looking for specialization make sure to head to the great learning dot in website as well guys so on this note uh, you know this is the end of the session uh, you know wherever you guys have tuned in from thank you so much for tuning in i'll see you on the next one cheers guys